All right, this is part B of our pop-up room sculpture. This is the really fun part where we actually get to add the designs. So in this part, you're gonna need things like markers or crayons, colored pencils, and hold on to your Sharpie too so that we can use that for outlining. All right, so here is my first one that I made. I made it into a kind of a breakfast room. I might do something similar, I might change it up. And remember, Everything that I do in this video is just an idea. What I don't want you to do is copy my art exactly. What I do want you to do is just find inspiration for how to draw some things and make it your own. What's gonna make your art really fun is if you experiment and um, really make it your own. I can't say that enough. Okay, so what you wanna do first is flatten out your pop-up room and that's so it's easier to draw. As I draw it I will kind of lift it up so I can kind of see how it looks like and how I need to draw things at a different angle but generally flattened out it's nice and good right there. Okay first thing I want to make my chairs similar to these so what's going to happen is I'm going to draw the back of the chairs on the wall. Normally chairs face this way, but I'm gonna draw the back this way. So I'm gonna draw a line in pencil right here. That's gonna be the back of the chair. Then draw a line that goes from here up, angling just ever so slightly. And I'm actually gonna bring us a little bit closer so it's a little easier to see, okay? Angling up. Now I wanna bring this lines over, over, and down just a hair. This is a, almost gonna be like the top of the chair. Chairs often have some like slits in them, so we're gonna draw some skinny little rectangles, leaving some space on the side, and that's gonna be the back of the chair. All right, chairs often have these little rungs at the bottom, so I'm gonna draw those there. All right, take my Sharpie, put the cap on the end, and I'm just going to outline my pencil lines right away. You could wait to outline all of your um, sketch after if you want, that's a good idea too. But especially so you guys can see this a little bit better, I'm gonna outline it here. All right, look right here. This is where the crease ends, right? I'm gonna outline right here too because that's almost like the edge of the chairs. All right, so let's see how this is looking. Ooh, pretty nice, pretty nice. I like it. All right, I'm gonna do a different type of chair over here. I want this maybe to be a little bit more scrolly, so I'm just gonna make a design up. Scroll, and a little bit of a fancier chair, right? Line here, here. Let's add some scrolls here, I like that. All right, let's outline it. Maybe this is more of a metal chair. All right. Okay, so two chairs. Now for my table. My table legs, I want them to be fairly simple and I want to draw the edge of the table. The table will look too thin if you just draw a single line, so I'm gonna draw a double line right here. And instead of making the legs right on the edges, I'm gonna bring them in just a tad. I'm drawing a line that ever so slightly angles in. Draw the bottom, angling in. There we have it. Draw a line on that crease. If you were making this into a bed, I would draw tinier legs and I would draw the bottom um, or this horizontal line closer to the bottom. So it's almost like the mattress sits lower, right? Okay. Let's draw a line up here, right along the crease. This is like the other end of the table. All right, let's see how it's working. Wow, when you hold it up like that, it really comes together. All right, we're getting down the basics. Um, it's good to outline on the edges right here too. 
forgot to do that. There we go. Right here. Everything kind of stands out when you outline them. I love it. All right. So what we have left really is what goes on the table and what goes on the, um, or in the, on the wall, excuse me, on the wall, and then on the floor. I stopped because I actually just had an idea pop into my head. Um, yeah, no pun intended, popped into my head. And I thought about making shutters for a window. Man, now I really want to try that actually. Um, hmm, how would I do that? Let's see. I had... Hmm. Let's try it out. Let's see. I'm going to sketch out a window. Y'all are bearing with me. I'm going to draw a square over my table. Hmm. I'd have to. Okay. All right. All right, y'all. Bear with me. Miss Wright got an idea in her head and I really want to try it. <laughs> okay, so I want to draw a window with shutters that open, um, that open up like this. So I'm going to take my scissors out again and what I'm going to do is fold it, just pinch it right here. I don't want to fold it right here. I'm carefully pinching here. And what I'm going to do is take my scissors and cut here in here and then I'm going to take my scissors and in the middle I'm going to cut along that crease. All right so I just creased it vertically. I cut right here and here. I opened it back up and then um, cut a line right here. Ooh, I like this. Okay let's let's fold it over. Oh, I'm so glad I did that. I love this. It's so cute. So if you get ideas along the way, go for it. What do you have to lose, right? Oh, it's so cute. So cute. So cute. You know, shutters might actually be going outside too. So they could go outside that way. Add some interest to the back. You choose whoever you like. Okay. So, all right. I'm going to outline those. Give some detail to those shutters. I'm going to outline this line that I cut. All right, draw a line in the middle. And shutters often have these little lines going across. So I'm gonna draw those, maybe draw a little handle. When you're drawing a window, if you add a window on your wall, you could outline it. So I'm just drawing a double line right around the line that I right around the shape that I just drew. All right, I like it. That's already adding some interest. I may even wanna draw some lines right here too. Even though it's on the yellow, that is okay, I like that. All right, how's it looking? Looking pretty good. Okay, so I wanna add some shelves to my little um, breakfast nook over here. So what I'm gonna do is draw some skinny rectangles. Little parallel lines, skinny rectangles. One above, one below. And I'm gonna fill those shelves with things like pots. So maybe I wanna draw a circular pot or a vase oval on top. Maybe it has some little handles on the side. Maybe I draw a skinny vase that kind of curves at its neck and comes to a circle. All right, let's see how that looks outlined. Might draw some reeds and some flowers. All right, I like it a lot. All right, remember we're not adding color right now, we're just designing. This is the really fun part.
Okay, maybe I want the lower shelf to be a bookshelf. If you ever draw a bookshelf um, from the front view, all it is is vertical rectangles or vertical lines one after another. They can be skinny books like that. They can be thicker books. Let's get a little closer. Thicker books like this. Make some high, make some low, right? It's like we're seeing the spines of the books. I like it. All right, there's my bookshelf. All right, maybe you want to add some art or a mirror. I'm going to add a um, picture frame over here. I'm going to make it vertical or... Um, rectangle. I'm going to make the picture frame rectangle. And to kind of match my scrolly um, chair, I'm going to add some scrolly lines inside my frame. So to make a frame, just draw another rectangle right around the one you first drew. And let's make some scrolls. Just drawing some spirals. All right, let's see how this looks. There's so many things that you can add in your pop-up room. What I want each of you guys to do at home is to really add that detail. Don't draw one thing on the wall. Draw four or five things on the wall. Add it and give it some character. Maybe you, you could even think about this as some place you want to live or visit or just your dream house, right? You can make it extra fancy if you want or nice and comfy all right one thing I thought of too was to draw a lamp and I want that lamp to be um, coming down from the ceiling so I'm going to draw um, angle lines right here curve line on the bottom and then a vertical line going up and this is going to be like a little um, pendant lamp. There we have it. All right. I will color my picture in with the picture frame later. Okay, so here I have it. I might want to add a rug, but today I kind of feel like adding some floor tile before I add a rug. So I'm going to do this in pencil so I don't mess up. And I'm going to make some of that checkerboard floor tile. So I'm going to draw vertical lines first, making sure that they're nice and even. Oop, not quite. Get my eraser. And there we have it. All right. Here's some um, part of my um, floor tile. And then I'm going to draw some horizontal lines that go left to right. Again, you can tell I'm just playing here. There's no right or wrong way to make your pop-up room sculpture. I just want you to take the time to add some detail. Okay, here I have it. So I have all my lines. I'm going to start outlining those in Sharpie. Being careful to make sure I'm trying to make it um, straight. When you're making this, it's good to have something underneath you in case you get any Sharpie on the um, table. Draw a line at that crease. Remember, we draw lines at the crease. All right, looking good. Okay. Um, oh, only thing that's left is what is on my table. So I'm going to actually draw some placemats for my table and then some circles right there on top for the plates. To draw a knife, you draw a vertical line with a little bump and bring it down. For a fork, you draw a vertical line with a letter U up top. So three little prongs. You can kind of see that, right? All right, let's draw another one on the other side. Circle for a plate. Knife. Fork. 
All right, to draw an egg, you might draw something that looks a little squiggly with a circle inside. I want this to be some bacon over here. Egg, bacon. We're having breakfast. All right, let's outline that. If you want to draw a cup from above, you just draw a circle and then it kind of looks like a cup. And a fork and my bacon. All right, so when I was drawing in pencil, I also try to draw kind of light. And now what I want to do is just take my eraser and quickly kind of erase anywhere I see a pencil line. Just to clean it up. We don't need the pencil lines anymore now that everything is outlined. I outlined as I went, especially on the floor. So one thing that um, you can do if you are going to make floor tile or even like wood flooring, before you draw the full, whole flooring, if you wanted to add a rug, I would draw the rug first and then draw around it. But I was just gonna leave the tile. All right, now it's time to color. We're gonna flatten it out and add color. All right, whoops. I'm gonna make this first chair a brown, so just color that in. When you're using markers, put the cap on the back. I'm trying to stay inside my lines the best I can. All right. Let's make the other one a nice red velvety chair. I'm using my fancy markers today, but you do not need fancy markers. You can use Crayola markers, you can use crayons. Um, I like the way markers go over the um, cardboard though. Okay, I want everyone to give a little bit of color to the background, so pick a light color like yellow or a light green, and that just gives a different color to the walls versus the floor. And what I'm going to do is just go right around all the objects that I drew, trying, being careful not to go in the lines. This adds a little bit more detail. Remember, as you're watching this, don't look at this and think that you have to copy what I did exactly. I want you to create your own design. So for this project, you don't have to create a sketch before you do it so that you can just kind of experiment as you go. Like I thought of the shutters as I went, but please do not copy mine exactly. I want to see what you guys can create. All right. What's next? The shutters. Let's make the shutters a nice light blue. Let's make the frame of the window a bold red. All right, now I want to add a picture inside of my frame. So I'm gonna grab 
some greens and blues because I want it to look like a landscape. All right, let's see. Okay, all right, when I'm making a landscape, I want it to be um, have some green hills. So I'm going to draw a line that curves down, fill that in. Let's draw another hill in the background, make that one maybe darker green. Line that goes here. Maybe a blue for the last hill. Hills get bluer as they get farther away from us. So do mountains. And for the sky, I'm just going to brush some little horizontal lines of blue for my landscape. All right, it's a nice landscape picture. All right, the books. Make sure you add some color to the books. All right, if you were um, adding some color to some vases or some pots, give it a dark edge and then make the other part of it lighter. So I just added some, added a dark edge and I'm gonna make this other part lighter. So it looks like it kind of has a shadowed part, right? Same with the lamp. All right, now for the flooring, if you wanna do a classic black and white look, you can do that, but I'm gonna make it um, two different colors. So let's think about that. I'm gonna make it, hmm, I think this mint and pink. Let's test that out. All right, I like that. That's nice and light. That will blend in. All right, if you're making a checkerboard pattern, you skip every other one. And when you get to the next row, don't draw the pink right there. Skip up. All right, let's see. You kind of get the idea there. I'm gonna stop there just for time's sake and pick up my green so we can kind of see what that looks like. All right, I like it nice and light so it doesn't stand out too much. And now you can kind of get the idea how that floor is gonna look. All right, for the eggs, I wanna add a little dot of yellow for that center yolk, right? Little dot of yellow and get a brown for the bacon. And maybe I could even use a white or a yellow crayon, draw along my placemats. Sometimes crayons are good for other parts you can mix and match. All right, let's see how we're looking. And I think other than the floor, which I'll finish, I think that I am done. Thanks guys so much for watching. I cannot wait to see what you guys create with your pop-up room sculptures. Remember, yours does not have to look like mine. I want yours to be unique. Have fun and turn these in by taking a picture of them and emailing them to me. If you need help with that, just message me and I'll be happy to help. Good luck creating.